Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington from LearnYourLand.com and I'm in a beautiful place right now. As you can see all around me, I'm surrounded by a sea of green. And this green owes its color to the chlorophyll pigment in the leaves of these trees and plants around me. Now we just passed through the summer solstice here in the northern hemisphere. And although summer is not necessarily considered a prime wildflower season, at least in Pennsylvania, it's still a great time of year to get out and look at and appreciate all the wildflowers that are available. And we're gonna focus on one in particular in this video today. It's actually one that gets confused for a fungus more so than any plant that I've come across because it's white and it lacks the chlorophyll pigment and therefore it does not photosynthesize, but it's still able to obtain its nutrients somehow. And this plant is none other than the Indian pipe or corpse plant. Its Latin name is Monotropa uniflora and Monotropa uniflora is in the Ericaceae family or the Heath family. So it's not too distantly related from blueberries and cranberries and rhododendrons. It's in the subfamily Monotropoideae, and why this is important is because this subfamily is characterized by plants that are mycoheterotrophic. Mycoheterotrophic, myco from mushroom and heterotroph from an organism that cannot produce its own food. If we look at the Indian pipe and we put these words together, we can see that it requires a fungus to obtain its nutrients somehow. And it's actually a three-way network in order for it to obtain its nutrients, and here's how it works. There are certain trees associated with the Indian pipe plant. Here in Pennsylvania, those would be American beech trees and pine trees and some other trees. And they obtain their nutrients from the sun through photosynthesis. And these nutrients are then passed, some of them are passed to certain mycorrhizal fungi. And the mycorrhizal fungi in turn shuttle some of their nutrients over to the trees. These would be minerals and water. So they exchange nutrients between each other. And then the Indian pipe plant then absorbs some of these nutrients from the mycorrhizal fungus that originally got its nutrients from the tree. So if we look at this, the mycorrhizal fungus actually acts as a bridge between the tree and the mycoheterotroph, which is the Indian pipe plant. So that certain nutrients, namely carbon, can pass from the plant roots over to the mycorrhizal fungus, over to the Indian pipe plant. And what's interesting is that research shows that the Indian pipe plant is pretty much a taker. It's not really a giver. It doesn't give up anything in exchange for the nutrients that it receives. Now, a good question is, you know, there's a lot of mushrooms out this time of year, especially since we've had so much rain in the northeastern United States this year. Can all mushrooms work with this network so that the Indian pipe plant can absorb some of these nutrients? And the answer is no, not really. Research shows that it's usually members of the Russellaceae family, and these members would be Russula mushrooms and the Lactarius mushrooms. These are two genre of mushrooms that are in the Russellaceae family. So if you're not familiar with Russula mushrooms, the Russula mushrooms are generally larger mushrooms in the woods that are characterized by having brightly colored caps, reds, oranges, greens, sometimes purples. And if you flip them upside down, the gills are usually white and they're brittle. And there's no veil around the stem. If you would pick one of these mushrooms up and happen to throw it against a tree or a rock, not like I've ever done this or anything, but it would shatter quite easily because it's very fragile. The lactarius mushrooms are in the same family, so they slightly resemble Russula mushrooms, but if you would flip them upside down and look at their gills, and if their gills are bruised, they would begin to exude a white milky latex, hence the name Lactarius. So these are two genres of mushrooms, the Russulas and the Lactarius mushrooms that are in the same family, Russulaceae, that are associated with the Indian pipe plant. So even though we've had so much rain the past few weeks here in Pennsylvania, and there are numerous bolete mushrooms that are out there, Amanitas, Cortinarius mushrooms, chanterelles, black trumpets, oysters, all kinds of different mushrooms. The Indian pipe plant specifically wants its nutrients from the Russula and the Lactarius mushrooms, which actually get their nutrients from the trees. The Indian pipe plant has been used as a traditional medicine. In North America, we see in traditional Cherokee medicine, for example, that the Indian pipe plant has been used as an anti-convulsant herb as a dermatological aid and also as an eye wash. And even modern herbalists are using them for similar conditions and tinctures can be made as a nervine and for a gentle pain reliever as well. Now is a great time to get out and look for the Indian pipe plants. If you're in Pennsylvania, if you're in the Northeastern United States, you're gonna look for rich, moist woodlands characterized by beech trees and pine trees. And you're gonna to wanna to step off the trail a little bit. They don't grow out in the open. They grow underneath the canopy. 
So you're gonna look where the mushrooms would be found. And they tend to grow in small clusters. And you're gonna look for these white flowering stalks. So those stalks that you see are actually flowers and there's one flower per stalk, hence the name Uniflora. That's its species name. Now these are very difficult to propagate. They would be tough to dig up and bring them home because remember it needs this extensive specific network in order for it to thrive. It needs these specific mycorrhizal fungi, the rustlers and the lactarius mushrooms, and it needs the specific trees all working in tandem in order for the Indian pipe to absorb the nutrients from the tree but through this mycorrhizal fungus. They're probably best appreciated out in the wild. But I do encourage you to get out this time of year and look for this unique plant, the Indian pipe, and if you do find them, look for the lactarius mushrooms and look for the rustla mushrooms and vice versa. If you see these mushrooms, look around. Perhaps you will see some of the Indian pipe plants and know that just beyond your sight, right underneath your feet lies this vast, very specific network involving specific plants or trees, specific mycorrhizal fungi in this mycoheterotroph that we call the Indian pipe plant, which although it's a chlorophyllous, meaning it lacks chlorophyll, it's not able to photosynthesize. It's still able to draw in nutrients through this specific network so that it can produce these mysterious yet very beautiful white wildflowers this time of year. Thanks so much for watching this video. Really appreciate it. Hope you get a chance to get out there and look for the Indian pipe plant this year. Thanks again. Take care.